Hello and welcome back to the building of the Flare SE5A and as you can see the task that I've been tackling this week has been the painting of the roundlets. Now I might have to admit that I had uh, approached this task with a little bit of trepidation but uh, with a little bit of research on the internet and a little bit of head scratching uh, I was managed to, I hope to come up with uh, a decent end result. The first thing is um, I checked out Cliff Harvey's uh, RC plane site and way back he did a video about painting the roundlets and a really useful bit of advice was that each section is an equal gap. So to work out your dimensions you simply divide them by five. One, two, three, four, Five. That was really useful and saved me a lot of head scratch and I wasn't aware of that. So thanks for pointing that out. Uh, I started by doing the lower wings first because as you can see there's a slight difference in the roundlets. The upper wings have a white surround, the lower wings uh, don't. And also I was working on the logic that if I did make a mess of it, it wouldn't be as obvious on the lower wing panel. So, how did I go about it? Well, the first thing is to talk about the covering itself. The covering, as I've mentioned on previous videos, is Solatex. And while it has many advantages, one disadvantage that I have discovered is that it doesn't take very well to um, masking tape, or masking tape doesn't take very well to it. And I had a devil of a job getting the masking tape to take... To the surface but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit so the first thing was to work out the size of the roundlets and I did that by looking at photographs of the originals the virtually the whole well almost the whole width cord of the wing and then using Cliff Harvey's advice about the proportions I was able to mark these on you will notice that the uh, lower wing the roundlets are further in from the tips compared to the upper wing surface. That also made it easier because I didn't have to worry about the uh, ailerons cutting into the design. It was just another problem I would have to face uh, later on. So having worked out the dimensions and the worked out at 110 millimeters, 66 and 22. And I marked them on with a tool that I haven't used since I was at school, uh, a compass. And this is a rather nice one, as I discovered, because in the kit, just bear with me a second, in the kit comes this little gizmo. And basically, it's a plastic pad with a hole in the centre to put the point of the compass in. And by putting a bit of double-sided tape on the underside, I was able to mark on the roundlets dimensions without fear of damaging the covering obviously with the point of the compass and one simply it was a simple matter of putting it into there and protectively uh, no damage was done and the trick i found was to leave that glue uh, stuck on until right until the very center or the red circle was to be painted on so how did i go about it well as i say i initially tried using um masking tape and after trying three or four different types this was the one that i ended up using it's a frog tape which is used for diy work but it's finer than the average stuff that you can you can buy in most stores i had used tamiya tape but i found that the tamiya tape is obviously designed to be used on plastic models and it just doesn't take to the fabric covering at all it doesn't stick which makes it useless. So cutting this, putting this under a, gl a glass sheet and cutting it into thin strips, I was able just about to get it to adhere on the outer circle and the outer edge on the upper wing, it turned out to be these two comfortably. After that, there's real difficulty in getting this to go around. Once you start getting to the inner circle, 
and certainly the center red circle, there's no way that you can bend the tape around to get it to actually cover. So what was I left with? So you, I got the outer edge round, masked off, and I got the inner on the upper wing masked off. And then the trick is to paint over the edge with the undercoat covering. In this case, it's uh, olive drab, which is a good match to this Solartex. Then any bleed that one gets under the tape matches the under the background colour. So you don't get white bleed in this case onto the surrounding area. And that works really well. So I was able to airbrush the outer white circle and while it was masked up I sprayed the centre. However, when it came to painting the rest, it had to be done by hand and by eye. So the pencil lines had been marked on and then simply it was a case of very carefully using a flat artist brush painting it around. Now it took three or four goes the covering. Uh, it still needs to be sealed with a, a fuel proof uh, and that will take out some of the what I can see some brush marks but overall I'm, I'm actually very pleased with the effect. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to go with the large letter A which was on some of the photographs I've seen of this plane others it didn't have them so the cop out might be to just leave it off but overall I think that's been a successful journey very pleased with it um, advice from Cliff Harvey on his video check them out um, was really helpful saved me a lot of time so until the next time onwards and upwards take care now